Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. My guest this morning is a civil rights activist, education reform advocate, and nationally known academic, Dr. Howard Fuller. Welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you. And uh, last year, during this time, you released your book, No Struggle, No Progress, A Warrior's Life from Black Power to Education Reform. I love that title. This book actually gives individuals uh, a look at the journey that you've taken that has made you really the man you are today. Tell us more about it. Yeah, it was very interesting. First of all, I was very fortunate to get Lisa Frazier Page to work with me. Mm -hmm. uh, she collaborated with me on the book. She's the same person who collaborated with the three young men in Newark. Okay. who had a pack in high school to become doctors, mm -hmm. and two of them became doctors and one became a dentist. So the book was called The Pack, P-A-C-T. And so Lisa was really phenomenal to work with. And so it took us about 16 months, uh, you know, to do the book. And it was, it was, it was kind of, Andre, to tell you the truth, kind of a bitter, sweet experience in the sense that I'm really a person who doesn't like to look back I, I really like to look at the present and to look forward. But if you could write a book, you know, about yourself, you sort of have to, oh, yeah. you have to look back. So. Oh, yeah. And so many people yeah. uh, look up to you and respect you. It, it really, I think, is saying a lot that you can put all of your hard work and your life story in between the cover of a book, <laughs> you know, yeah. and have people be able to uh, not only be inspired and motivated by you, but better understand who you are uh, all together. So uh, you were born in Shreveport, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Yep. Your parents were sharecroppers, and it was around the age of seven that you moved to Milwaukee with your mother. So mm -hmm. you've been here for most of your adult life, and you've moved to other places in Major Mark and ended up back here in Milwaukee. So uh, we're taking you back. Uh, to the days where you grew up in a housing project. It was Hillside Terrace. Yeah. And you said back during those days, you really didn't have a clue that you were poor. Tell well, <laughs> you, know, so, well me, you know, I mean, what I would say is I recognize that there were people who had more than we had, uh -huh. but my mother, um, you know, I was really raised by my mother and my grandmother, mm -hmm. you know, who I love, you know, dearly. Um, and my mother did everything to make sure that you know, I had what I needed, mm -hmm. and all of us who lived in Hillside, I mean, we were all sort of in the same situation, you know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> you know, we, we, we I, I mean, I had a, a great early life in Milwaukee. I mean, I, I really have no complaints, but it, it was really because of my mother and because of people that surrounded us back during that period and, and supported us, and particularly those of us who didn't have all of the money in the world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for them, it was all about making sure that I finished school and that I went on to college. That was, you know, their goal for me. And, you know, back then there wasn't, you didn't ask why, you know. <laughs> you, <laughs> you just know, knew yeah, that you yeah, had yeah. to do it. I, I, mean, I was grown before I knew there was a word called why. I didn't know you could, I didn't know you could really you ask that question. better not ask your mama why. <laughs> yeah. My little grandson, I told him to do something the other day, and he asked me why. I was like, why? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's really a tribute to them, you know, that I'm at the point that I am yeah, you know, today. Yeah, and I'm sure that they are smiling down on all <laughs> that you've accomplished because you exceeded uh, those very things that they wanted you to accomplish. And uh, you have a chapter in your book called uh, Grandma's Hands, yes. and you talk about these two women, your mom and your grandma, yeah. who, uh, in my opinion, uh, come off like Incredible Hulk 1 and 2 <laughs> because uh, they made it very clear uh, that they were independent women, they were going to take care of business, and I think everybody that knew your grandma probably knew not to mess with her, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pearl, Pearl was a phenomenal <laughs> person, right? I, I tell the story in this book where uh, I was sitting on the, we were in Shreveport, this uh -huh. was in the 40s, right? So we were sitting on the back steps, and I was sitting there with my mother, Juanita, and so a cop came to the house and said, oh, somebody robbed somebody and they're in your house. And my mother said, well, there's nobody in the house. Mm -hmm. So the cop kicked her. And so the people who live in, in the back was a lady named Aunt Sally. She called Pearl at work and said, hey, this police officer. That's grandma. Kicked, yeah, <laughs> Pearl Wagner, call Pearl. And called my grandmother and said, you know, this cop kicked Juanita. And so my grandmother came home. This is the voice. <laughs> My grandmother came home, got her gun, <laughs> and went to the police station looking for the policeman they who kicked, kicked her, her daughter. daughter right? you know, so, 
So people say I'm crazy, and I am, but it's all my grandmother's fault. So. I love that. <laughs> and I, I really have to wonder what happened when Pearl went to the uh, police so station with a gun. So people came and, and talked to her out of, uh, but you, you'd have to know my grandmother. Oh, you know, so. I love that story. And uh, uh, as a young man, you actually integrated uh, not only your elementary school, but yeah. also Carroll College. Talk about that experience and uh, what that has meant for you. Yeah, you know, I went to St. Boniface, and mm -hmm. um, I think there might have been two or three of us, you know, black students at St. Boniface mm -hmm. at that point in time. And actually, when I went to North, um, North was probably about 50 to 75 percent white wow. when I okay. came in as a, as a ninth grader. Mm -hmm. And really, North changed during the time when I was there. And then, you know, for years after. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I was given a basketball scholarship to go out to Carroll. Mm -hmm. um, and Mr. Wesley Scott, you know, one of my mentors who I will remember and love forever, you know, talked to me about the importance of trying to integrate uh, colleges in the state back then. And so I made a decision to, to go to Carroll. Mm -hmm. And so I think for the first two years, maybe three, I was by myself. Mm -hmm. I know Ira Grant came out you know, and play basketball, um, you know, later. I think my senior year, I was a freshman. Okay. And I think I may be the first black male to graduate. I, I don't think I'm the first black student to graduate. And I know I'm not the first black person to go to Carroll mm -hmm. because th there was a soldier back, you know, way back who went to Carroll, but I don't really know whether he graduated. Okay, but you were one of those individuals who stood out, uh, men of color, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who were really making great strides because uh, you were an exceptional student and athlete, and a lot of young people don't understand, especially those who are really good at sports, they don't yeah. understand the importance of being really good at your sport and being a really good athlete, right. hence the word, student right. athlete. Right. You you actually had an academic scholarship as well as yes. a sports scholarship. Talk yeah. about that. Well, what happened is that I, I tore ligaments in my ankle my mm -hmm. senior year in high school, and I was worried that I would get hurt in college and lose, and, your scholarship. And lose my scholarship. Yeah. So the scholarship was based on the fact that I had to get a higher grade point average each semester mm -hmm. to keep my scholarship. And then by the time I was a junior, it had to be a B. And even if I got hurt, I would still have the scholarship, okay. you know, and so that's 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 how that worked out. Okay, uh, we have to talk a little bit about your Black Power militant days. <laughs> I, I don't know, I can't envision this, but at the same time, I can. You were the founder of the Malcolm X Liberation University yes. in Durham, North Carolina. This is in the late '60s, and I think it's an indication that education would play a huge role in your life. But uh, in this book, how do you uh, talk about that guy who was throwing his fist in? The <laughs> yeah, you know, um, everybody like sort of lives in the period that they're in. Yeah. And, and Frantz Fanon wrote a book called Wretched of the Earth, and he said that every generation out of relative obscurity must discover its mission and either fulfill it or betray it. Wow. And so at the point in time, you know, when I was younger and in, in, in those movement days, it was about black power. Mm -hmm. And the person who influenced me the most was Malcolm X. I actually... April 4th or April 3rd, 1964, when Malcolm gave the ballot or the bullet speech at Cory Methodist Church in Cleveland, I was there. Oh, wow. And his, that speech changed my <laughs> whole life. That's, that's how I know when sometimes people come up to me and say, hey, you gave a speech at such and such a time, it changed <laughs> my life. I actually know that a speech that can change possible. a person's Absolutely. life, right? Just based on where you're at at that moment. So what happened in, in, in Durham was that um, I was involved with organizing students and training them to become organizers. Mm -hmm. And one of the groups of students were from Duke University. And so they worked with me during the summer. And then they went back to Duke, you know, for the fall. Mm -hmm. And they came back changed. And they began to demand from the administration that they create an Afro-American studies program. And that led to them taking over the administration building, a whole lot of stuff oh, wow. going on. And then as the discussion was going on, we decided that we needed to create an independent black institution. And that's how the idea of Malcolm X Liberation University was born. 
and I was given the responsibility of organizing and creating that university. That's awesome. And I think it's important for us to let all of our viewers at home know how they can get their hands on this book. This is one of those that, especially for those people out there who are educators and who are super passionate about education itself, uh, how can they add this to their collection? Yeah, there's a couple ways. You, you can get it on Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, and there's also uh, a Kindle version. Okay. So you can get both, uh, you know, the, the regular version. <laughs> so I got both the regular version and I got one on You're Kindle. You're a techie, so <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course yeah. you have yeah, the so Kindle you get, version. So you get the Kindle version. Yeah, so. <laughs> I love that. And uh, as we wrap up today's show, uh, you've talked about uh, st things that you are most proud of, but when you look back, even though you don't necessarily <laughs> like to do that, uh, what are you most proud of as far as your accomplishments? You know, what's really interesting, Andrea, it's hard for me to answer that because I'm hoping that my best accomplishment is still in front of I me love that. in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. And but I do think that the, the the great fortunate thing to be the superintendent was very important to me. And what I got out of that, or what I hope people will remember, was that I was able to establish relationships with kids, mm -hmm. and and I worked very hard, you know, to do that. And so I think what I'm most proud of is that I still have people who are older now who come <laughs> up to me and say, I was at that dinner that you gave when, you know, for the kids who got good grades. Oh. And so that's really important to me. So. Those are the things that matter. They matter. So thank yeah. you so much oh, for yeah, coming by. For I always look up to you and respect all that you've done. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Dr. Howard Fuller is a distinguished professor of education and the founder and director of the Institute for the Transformation of Learning at Marquette University. And that is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues, Milwaukee. Have a great day.